I've been a non-stop traveler for about five years, but the last year and a half I've been a solo female traveler and let me tell you, I have learned a lot about how to stay safe and avoid dangerous situations while traveling and today I'm gonna share my top tips with you. One of the most important things that I do is sharing my location with two to three people at all times. Typically that's one person in Mexico, one person in the US, and one person specifically wherever the town or city is that I'm living in. There are a lot of apps that you can do this for free. I just use Find My iPhone and it doesn't actually drain your battery at all. The next extremely important thing I do to keep myself safe while traveling is I try to always leave my rental or apartment wherever I'm staying with a fully charged phone. In addition, I always, always, always have a portable battery pack on me that is also fully charged, so I'm never put in a situation where I don't have um, access to call somebody in an emergency, get an Uber, get a taxi, call 911, or anything like that. I'll leave one that I recommend down in the description. I've had it for like six years now, and it's going strong, and it's about the size of a tube of lipstick, so it's super portable, and I take it with me everywhere. Another thing I like to do when traveling alone, especially if I have to walk around at night, but and in, in any case, if I'm just walking around by myself and perhaps feeling uncomfortable is call someone on the phone. Call a friend and just chat the entire time I'm walking because somebody is way less likely to come up and bother somebody that's on the phone and would have a way to communicate like, hey, there's this creepy guy that looks like this that's following me or something, than somebody who's just trying to keep their head down. And if it's an absolute emergency and nobody's available because it's super late at night or something, I will fake have a conversation on the phone because that is just as effective and I don't mind talking to myself and looking like a crazy idiot if it means staying safe. The next extreme extremely important thing that I've learned while traveling is to always, always, always trust my gut feeling. In any situation where I have red flags going up, I always listen to that and get out, even if it means doing the most awkward thing possible, like walking away from somebody mid-conversation, um, getting out of an appointment even if I've already paid for it, or anything along those lines. That also means if, for instance, somebody walks up to me and there's a bunch of other people around and they're asking me, the very obviously foreign girl, who's alone, for some help with something, then I'm just going to walk away because there's no, there's absolutely no need for somebody to do that when there's plenty of other people who are very clearly locals all around. And I'm not saying that I, <laughs> if some old man walks up and asks me to open the door for him uh, or needs help with groceries or something, I'm not going to be rude or mean to people unnecessarily. But if it's giving me that weird, like, hmm, I don't know about this feeling, then I just get out. The next thing I do just to be on the safe side since I do live alone and who even knows what the heck could happen while I'm by myself in my apartment, trip over a rug and crack my head on the uh, kitchen table or get sick, have a coughing fit, who knows? Heaven forbid anything would happen while I'm living alone by myself. That was redundant. <laughs> but I have a check-in buddy. So there's a friend of mine that we send an emoji every morning whenever we wake up or whenever we think of it through the day. So if we don't hear that from the other person, then we call, we check in and make sure that nothing else is going on. So it's just an added level of security just in case because, you know, maybe family members of mine, they're like, okay, we hear from her a couple times a week or depending on the situation, whatever. But um, just to have that person that is consistently checking up on you. This person is also one of those people that has my location shared so that she would know if I was home or somewhere else and whether or not to be worried. Before I move on, please hit that subscribe button if you're interested in seeing more videos just like this with travel tips and information and about my life and traveling in Mexico. The next thing I do to stay safe is never doing anything in a pattern if I can avoid it. So that means even literally in the small town of Akihik where I currently live, I take different routes and different paths to go to restaurants, even if it means going out of the way or something just so that people cannot track my habits. I don't go to the same restaurant on the same day. And I know this isn't possible for some people, but whenever, if ever it's possible, I have the most spontaneous and erratic schedule and patterns. And it does make me feel a lot safer because people don't bump into me like, oh, hey, good to see you here again. And I don't have to wonder, hmm, are they planning something to go rob my apartment while I'm out? Or do they know that I always travel on the first of the month? If that was the case, it's not, so I don't have to worry so much. Moving right along, the next thing I do to make sure that I'm safe or as kind of an insurance plan is to take a picture of whatever my outfit is before going out, even on a travel day, and send it to a friend. Just like my emoji check-in buddy, that way, in case, once again, heaven forbid, anything were to ever happen to me, that's a picture that you can give to the police of exactly what I look like if I like got kidnapped or something. I hate saying that out loud, but like just in case, you never know. Um, I do not, however, post said picture on social media because I think that would have the complete opposite effect as to giving somebody essentially uh, like how to pick me out in a crowd if they wanted to. And that is something I worry about occasionally, like 
crazy fans maybe, or somebody that's a stalker that I don't know about. My next travel safety tip is to position myself in the most optimal place that I can in a restaurant. Obviously this isn't possible every single time, but if I can never have my back to the exit and always have a clear emergency exit path if I were to need to run out of there quickly, I try to do that. So that's not always in the very back corner of the restaurant, but definitely where nobody could sneak up behind me and grab me. I also think this goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway, I never, never, never leave my food and drinks unattended, especially drinks. So that means I will not go to the bathroom with a napkin or a coaster on top. I don't think that's safe at all. I'm either going to finish it or just give it back, you know, just be done with it at that point. And it does honestly make me kind of nervous that the standard thing that they do in Mexico is instead of bringing a box to you, they take your plate to the back and box it up there. That's just pretty standard practice. I have been recently asking for the box myself because even that makes me a little bit uneasy because if I were to go eat that somewhere else, especially if it's to-go food and they slip something in there or whatever, I just don't want to give myself that extra opportunity for risk. And I know this is going to sound incredibly paranoid, but it does make me feel better to have this to just take a quick pan of any bar, restaurant, or event that I'm going to so that, that that video can be up in the cloud. I'm not necessarily going to post it or include it in a vlog of my travels, but just to have it in case I need to look back and go, hmm, were there any unsavory characters or who was that guy or that person that did that thing? Now let's talk wardrobe. I am certainly not of the mentality of the victim blaming, well, what was she wearing type of thing, but I do think, for instance, if you go dressing like you're going to the beach in central Mexico, well then, yeah, you're going to stand out like a sore thumb and probably be more likely to be the target of scams or other undesirable situations. So that's why as a solo female, I have, for instance, started wearing jeans almost everywhere because that's what people do in central Mexico. They wear pants. And so when you're not, even if I'm wearing skirts or shorts or whatever, that does make me stand out and it does get me more stares, which at the very least makes me feel incredibly uncomfortable. But I also think it does make me more likely to be a target. Now let's talk Uber. Whenever I'm getting in an Uber or in driver or any other type of taxi, especially if it's one that I've ordered and then I know who it is that's supposed to be picking me up, I always, always, always verify the license plate and ask the driver what their name is. And I try not to go, are you Luis? instead make them tell me what their name is because they can just agree. I also don't volunteer my name unless they say, are you Maddie? And then of course I'm going to tell them. I also make it a habit to get on the passenger side in the back seat so that it's less likely that they can grab me or do anything if it ever turned into something like that. And I also verify as soon as I get in the car that I can open the door, that there's no child lock on and therefore that I'm not trapped inside the car. Also, when it comes to taking Ubers and taxis or any other type of transportation where it's not a fixed route, like on a bus, I'm always going to familiarize myself with the route ahead of time and typically I'll even have it up on my phone, not necessarily in the Uber app or anything like that, but just to see what the route is that they should be taking. And if they take any serious deviations off of that, then I know I either need to call 911 or communicate with them. Like for instance, when I was in Mexico City recently, the driver had accidentally put in a completely wrong address and so we were 30 to 45 minutes outside of the city, super confused what we were doing and just thinking mm, there must have been traffic, must have been an accident, must have been construction or something, and said something like this to that effect to the driver who didn't really respond totally like we thought. And that is an instance where thankfully I was with somebody, I was with Nate, Spanish with Nate, um, and nothing bad came of it, but I always, always, always make sure to have that up on my phone just in, in case anything starts to go awry. So another thing I do when I'm traveling is that I always keep my head looking on a swivel. That even means that I have pretty much all but stopped recording vlogs by myself because there's no way that I can really do that or even watch where I'm going to prevent myself from tripping and killing myself in a, a pothole or a, what do you call those? The, where the manhole, <laughs> there's no manhole cover on the thing, which is a thing that I see all the time, <laughs> especially in Mexico. Um, but I'm always looking around and in addition to that, I'm always making eye contact, at least brief eye contact, at least brief eye contact with anybody that I'm walking by because statistically speaking, studies have shown and in interviews with criminals that they are far, far less likely to target somebody who has seen them, who they know has looked them in the face than somebody that's just kind of keeping their head down and not walking very confidently. So confident walk, eye contact, super essential wherever I'm going. But on that note, 
not too much eye contact because I don't want somebody to think I'm interested in them like that. Also on the note of walking confidently, I do my best to always look up directions ahead of time so that as I'm walking, I'm not looking at my phone, confused and looking around, making myself a very obvious looking tourist. So I try to memorize or look at uh, things on my phone when I'm inside a restaurant or somewhere that's more safe and secure. Since of course I did get my phone stolen this past year, I now have this strap on the back, which makes it much less likely that somebody can just come up and swoop it right out of my hand. But I, I do my best not to be on my phone ever in public anymore. Aspen's gonna help me share this next one. Aspen is an adorable one-year-old schnoodle, my mom and stepdad schnoodle. <laughs> Isn't she so cute? Thank you for the kisses. <laughs> So the next thing is as a solo traveler, I'm always going to have some type of personal weapon on me. One of those could be these super long nails that I always keep. I know that sounds ridiculous, but I stab myself with these all the time, so I know they're effective. <laughs> Another thing, of course, is like pepper spray. I'm also looking into getting one of those lipstick tasers, and they also double as a flashlight. Although having that or any type of those like keychain personal weapons, you gotta be careful when flying with those because they don't always go through TSA, and sometimes they are are considered illegal depending on the countries. But having something as an extra layer of protection in case somebody were to attack you, I feel like, I mean, it makes me feel a lot better and I think it's very important. Thank you for the help recording, Aspen. <laughs> oh yeah, she's a good girl. <laughs> Such a little cutie patootie. <laughs> Before I continue with the rest of my list, I hope you will drop me a comment and let me know what your best tips are for staying safe while traveling. So pretty recently, I've dealt with some very unsettling and very scary uh, situations. One was in a restaurant where I was very sure that I was being targeted and asked some very uncomfortable questions that were not just the, hi, how are you, where are you from type of thing that, you know, was just somebody being friendly. Another time was at midnight when I was coming back, I was flying into the Guadalajara, Guadalajara airport and and the taxi driver, it, the vibe quickly shifted from where are you from, what are you doing in Mexico, or are you here on vacation, and all those type of like very standard socializing type questions, to is anybody at home waiting for you, do you have roommates, do you have a boyfriend, all these things where I'm like, oh my gosh, it is like, Nobody's awake right now. Ahiki is, is gonna be totally dead. I'm alone with this taxi driver, and he's asking me like, do I have roommates or is there anybody at my house? So in that case, I have no problem lying my ass off. And in any other context, I'm a very honest and very straightforward and very truthful person. But in this case, I'm like, yep, I do have a boyfriend and I'm very excited to see my big dog. They're both waiting up for me. My boyfriend's actually kind of mad because he usually goes to bed by now, but he's staying up late because he's so excited and he missed me so much and all this stuff. All of that were lies. Um, but if it means getting myself out of a situation like that, then absolutely, freaking lutely I'm going to do that. So uh, although, like I said, I don't think it's very, uh, that kind of viol violates my morals and values to lie to people in general. If it's in a dangerous situation like that, yes, stamp of approval for me. Ah, there's a quail! Okay, you probably can't see it because this is a wide angle lens. Along these same lines though, I always try to flip the conversation around to the other person to get them talking about themselves because first of all, people love talking about themselves and they're usually very happy to do it. Then also you're getting information about them and you can kind of feel out more so if it's a sketchy type of thing or if they are just interested or maybe they're hitting on you or something like that. So, um, you know, where are you from? What's your favorite food that you like to eat from around here? What do you do for fun? Do you have any other jobs? Or are you just a taxi driver normally? or whatever, just different things like that. In my experience, I have been able to tell when the person was being a little bit weird, um, even with the Uber drivers where at the end they've followed me a little bit. Thankfully with Uber, there's recourse, you can file a complaint or different things, but with taxis, not so much. Um, on the note of taxis though, something that I have started doing, especially since that very, very uh, uncomfortable taxi ride is to take a literal selfie with the taxi driver. Like, I don't care if I'm looking like a total tourist, like, hey, selfie time, and take a picture of their cab too, so you have their cab number. Um, I don't care, again, it's my safety at the end of the day, and I don't wanna be kidnapped or something, I don't know, something horrible, so I'm totally okay being that awkward weirdo that does something like that just to make sure. I've actually been driving all across Mexico for, I think, 
four-ish years now, but since I recently had to sell my car, recently as in, I can't believe it's been already a year because my residency, my residency changed from temporary to permanent and I wasn't able to nationalize the car. I don't currently have a car, which is why to include travel tips for driving in Mexico in my experience, I'll probably just do a separate video for that, which may be coming relatively soon because I'm so sick of not having a vehicle and feeling kind of like, landlocked or I don't know what the right phrasing is for that but um, I will be looking to get one in the next two months hopefully. If I missed any tips for how to stay safe while traveling please drop me a comment below it will also help out others. I hope you'll subscribe to my channel to see more content I post about my life and traveling in Mexico and on the screen here is a video I did recently where I was house hunting in Querétaro. Yep I am looking for a house to buy and the hunt continues and one more thing before you go. <laughs> bell so you get notified the next time I release a new video and I hope to see you there.